Good day and welcome back to Elementary 72 Gaming. Before I get into the video, I'd like to ask you all to please leave a like or comment on my video. Consider subscribing to my channel and if you dislike the, co the content, please leave a comment saying where it's gone wrong. So today is a war room video. However, this is going to be what I'm going to call the speculation war room. Our featured content is going to be Genesis vs OP4S Elysium and Avalanche. So that is the main topic of this war room today. Now, OP4S are basically in a ton of wars and there are going to be plenty of corps who are willing to talk out against them. Now, the invocation is still open to OP4S to come in and talk. Now, the invitation is going to extend to Reds, Elysium and Avalanche to come in and talk. And any other corp who has a war going on, feel free to give it to me to add into a war room video. War room videos are not scheduled in my channel. They come out at random the moment I have more information on a war. Now, I just got enough information on the war between Genesis, Elysium, Avalanche, OP4S. So, Genesis is on their own against these three allies. And it looks like Genesis is winning. The reason why I'd say Genesis is winning is they are pulling off battle outside of camps. They are pulling off battle in the middle of sectors, in the middle of areas, in the middle of mining fields. They're pulling off those battles. Those are the number one battles to do. They liberate any sector if they, uh, if OP4S or Avalanche or Elysium attempt any uh, station camps. So the whole thing is, this corp isn't a small corp like other corps. They are almost as big, if not bigger, than OP4S. If I am correct, OP4S are somewhere on the region of 2,600 members. That's extended with allies. And uh, Genesis Corp is around 3,000 members extended with their allied corporations and allied alliances. Now, that is the whole breakdown on what there is to look at in terms of those groups. Now, let's look at a little bit further into this whole fight. So, what started the fight between Genesis and OP4S? We don't have a confirmation. The closest tweet is going to be watching Sovereign. He has a conversation with O Doomsie from OP4S. He did give away some information on this whole issue and situation. However, I think it might have been in the heat of the moment he made a mistake in what he said. It could be that. Because if it is exactly as he said it, then OP4S started this fight just because they wanted to. And OP4S are a PvP corp and it does work out to form their right type of uh, MO in the game. However, they've gone a little bit too aggressive with it. They're thinking from the point of view of an EVE online player only. They're not thinking about the overall point of view that they are in EVE Echoes and they are still in the start of the game. They're playing like an expert level player and it's costing them majorly in fights. And I'm going to explain about this a little bit further when I get up to the conversation with uh, CNK and CNK, Trimark and OP4S. I am actually going to be moving toward the Trimark Alliance. Not moving into the Trimark Alliance. I'm going to be looking to interview the leader of the Trimark Alliance now because I've given OP4S and Reds enough time to give a statement or to get someone in to give me some commentary on where they stand with their wars. Now, I am going to take a little bit more of a harsh stance towards information because I have extended the invite to them and given them quite a nice amount of time. I am now going to view everything exactly from the point of view of the people against them because they have had a chance to come through and talk it's been open and they may not think that my channel is very big but in the future they might think of doing it and that's where it will come in so let's have a look at what's been going on in this whole war but that's trimark op4s uh, cnk genesis elysium well, i think i'm missing somebody avalanche all of these corporations fighting together now avalanche did no no yeah avalanche did uh back up the reds against trimark cnk now i'm not sure exactly if i have the right uh, corp there it might have been trebuchet or trench one of the other corps i'm not sure on the name exactly of who were allying uh the reds from op4s but they did have an ally come and join them to help them protect the station 
and that's basically all they've been able to do. Now, the overall fight against Genesis from the three allies hasn't been going very well. From what I gather, Genesis has kept a very strong front. They've been using the current format of the game to their advantage, realizing just as a lot of other players have, that you can't take a EVE Online stance and turn it into your EVE Echo stance because you don't have the research to play. Like, I, like I've always been saying, think about where your research is. If you have an expert level on any one of your research, you don't have to worry about playing those slot advantages to get you that extra range. You're going to have the range by default. And players have been listening to me. And then there are alliances like Genesis who have been playing like this from day one. They've informed their members not to play the same old strategies from EVE Online, remembering that the research plays an effect in how you can play with your gear. Now, I am giving this message out to OP4S, Reds, all of their allies. Just because a bird works on EVE Online, and just because you're an expert with full research, doesn't mean that it translates to you in EVE Echoes where you have no research. Remember, lower firepower means that you have lower firepower. Somebody else might have experted out their shields. They're going to be as tanky as tanky can be and your glass build is going to fail. Somebody else may have opted up their engineering to maximum level on their cruisers already and they have a cruiser that you can't stop by simply hitting them with one or two nudes. They have enough uh, capacitor and energy in their ship to hit you and blow you to pieces. Think about that before you start a fight. And remember to think about changing your formats. You can't just play one build every single time. Now, I can't talk about it directly from the Genesis Corp. I don't know if they're experiencing the exact same thing as us. And when I say us, I mean CNK Trimark. We have noticed that a lot of the players who are willing to venture out and fight have been playing a very foolish tactic, to say the least. They have been deploying themselves with a Warp Disruptor and Double Webs. Now, they believe that a Warp Disruptor and Double Webs take away any speed advantage and makes the other opponent weak against them. However, our players have been rub running a Double uh, Energy Drain, Shield Booster, Shield Hardener, and a, warp, a Micro Warp Drive and an Afterburner. Now, yes, they are cancelling the Micro Warp Drive and Afterburner out with their Warp Disruptor. But their webifiers are just slowing down the ship for a short period when they get in range. However, this is what they are running on their low slots. And this is on ships with four low slots, just so that you know, in case anybody is thinking that I'm not uh, being fair. They are running a shield hardener, a reactive shield hardener, a reactive shield, a re reactive armor boost, uh, armor hardener, and a react, and an adaptive armor hardener. So basically both armor hardeners, both shield hardeners in their four slots. And they are running a massive drain effect from what I can tell. And on top of that, they're just running rapid missile launches or cannons or lasers. And what this is doing for them is it's giving them this firepower and they believe they're super tanky in the way that they can't be beat. And just to be exact about it, I've seen about 20 or 30 kill reports on these members. We literally saw a mining vessel take out one of their vessels. That's because even our mining vessels have more speed than them. And they literally were trying to beat them while they were still farming. They, AFK, they hit the AFK player and his drone literally took apart their ship. Poor play. They didn't think about taking care of the drone. They kept attacking the ship. They didn't think about... Uh, recovering their shield, they didn't think about recovering their armor, they just thought about being hard to hit. And yes, they were hard to hit, and it most probably took quite some time. And the fact that they kept hitting the ship which was stationary says that they were doing very insignificant amounts of damage, and when they got back online, they most probably kicked in their shield, and they actually destroyed the vessel. It doesn't hold well to see this here. Miners shouldn't be destroying... PvP players, rethink your strategy, you did something wrong. Now, that was just one incident, maybe it was a glitch, maybe I have the ship wrong that was attacking, maybe it wasn't a mining vessel. I'm not 100% sure, it might have been a frigate. 
But nonetheless, it, it just goes to show you're running a cruiser against a small vessel and you're losing. And you're losing phenomenally. You're not even getting away with 10% damage on the opponent and you are literally destroyed. It doesn't mean that you're running double hardness. You are invulnerable. You need to remember that you're only adding somewhere near 70% extra resistance. And with weapon damage on missiles and other weapons ranging up to about 200 per slot in energy or any one type of weapon, that doesn't help you. That means you're reducing it by half the damage. And you don't have speed to tank away most of that uh, heavy hits. So you're still taking that 50% damage. You need some speed to get away. Moving around at 250 kilometers, uh, 250 meters per second isn't going to help you. You need to be moving at six, 700 meters per second. My cruiser can do a better job than what you did in that situation. Yes, you're going to try and block it up, but I have the recharge and I have the speed advantage over you. I'm literally going to tear you to pieces before your reactive shield has a chance to stop me. And that is the the situation that this whole game is in. Poor defense has resulted in an old type of play. If you had expert level hardeners on all four, expert level hardening on your armor and your shield, yes, that tactic would work. You'd most probably win nine fights out of ten. But you only have one of them which are high and one which is low. And obviously, these guys who are running drones are most li uh, likely running the thermal drones. And it's eating a way through you because you don't have speed to get away. You're literally trying to fly and hit something which is faster than your targeting range. And it's making circles around you non-stop. Taking out your shield at a very, very quick rate. You're basically playing as a PvE enemy against any one of our vessels. It's very easy to beat even with a mining ship. I've done it before. I've used the Venture to take out an Anomaly 3. Not the best of ideas. It's very slow, very, very uh, hard to fight in that manner. But you can do it. And this is just a show. You need to improve your strategies. Give your opponent something to fight against. This goes out to everybody. Don't think that an expert level build is going to keep helping you through. Advance with your research. Now... My best builds were working with research from a number of players put together and we were looking at where everybody was focusing. A lot of players were focusing in the same areas that I was focusing. Their primary weapon, their shield, their defense, everything coming up to the first level. So everything was working out towards my builds. And then when it went to the second level, people started jumping into armor all of a sudden and that's how come armor builds became a possibility but other players were higher in shield. Other players were higher in speed. It made a difference when it came to changing your bows. So moving forward, please remember that even though I may be considering you an enemy corp as a player of CNK, I'm not going to give you an unfair interview. You have a chance to come on here as any member of any other corp, including Gen Corp, who isn't, as far as I know, an ally of uh, CNK. And I've spoken to them friendly. I've featured them on the channel. I've given their point of view because they gave me the point of view. Now, this isn't from their leadership. That's how come I'm calling it a speculations video. If Genesis leadership are willing to talk, they can talk. And they can give me a full out uh, forceful piece of information. And I can put it forward. I suspect that they might be more willing to do it. And I might be going towards an interview with Trimark for the next uh, update on the CNK uh, Trimark versus Reds OP4S. Now, OP4S Reds have been pushed back severely in the area of catch. They've been retreating to their sector a lot, and the only way in which they have been gaining any advantage is the fact that their allies back up their station. Their allies have been helping them with most of their defense. In terms of attacks, 90% of their attacks fail. Players have been breaching their dock camps because they've started to lose effectiveness on what they are running. They are now running into massive fleets of uh, covert ops and they are being attacked by skilled players using the advantages of the game at the moment to their uh, skill. So that is what's been going on right now in the CNK Reds um, encounter. And it looks like the Reds are on the back foot for the moment. 
Now this is a war. Tides can change at any time. And there is a rumor of the PVE alliances. According to them, the OP4S alliance is about to fall to pieces. They don't suspect that any of the individuals, individual uh, alliances who are the allies are going to stick together with OP4S after this break. They believe that they may become the enemies. So Avalanche, Elysium, I'm not sure if you are involved in this, but I'd like to hear it if it does happen. I'm just saying if it does happen. As I said, this is speculations and rumors. This is from the PVE Corps, the widespread alliance of them. I'm not allowed in the actual meeting place because they only allow PVE Corp alliance leaders inside there. I'm not a PVE Corp, so I'm not allowed to get into the alliance meetings. And I'm not a leader, so I'm not allowed to get in there. But basically, they've discussed the whole situation. They said that within OP4S, they have spies. Now, since I don't know who's the leader from this whole group and they're not willing to say anything, this is what they told me. They have spies within OP4S. And within some of the smaller alliances, the leadership has been approaching them to get ready to leave OP4S. So, example, OP4S West, OP4S East, you might see a breakup in those groups. They might go from being OP4S West or OP4S East to being a new alliance altogether. That's because they're no longer happy with the leadership of OP4S. They believe that they are too lackluster and slacking. And they believe that they are too um, egotistical in a way, should I say, because of the number of wars that they started. It's basically boiling down to the fact that they started too many wars and they are getting hammered too hard. And OP4S leadership is of the opinion that they don't need to negotiate, even though a lot of the player base within their alliance have been complaining. Now, I'm not sure if it's 100% true. This could be propaganda to cause a little bit of a rift within OP4S. And this is from the PVE Corp. Now, remember, this entire video is a war room speculation video because none of it is confirmed with leaderships. When leadership speaks, I'll take it as confirmed information. Some of your information will be considered speculation as well. Just like the winning factor that I've said about CNK in the war is considered speculation. We may have the upper hand. That may be what it looks like. But from the point of view of Reds, it may be we capable of holding them in the station. That way it counts the most. We may be losing most of our ships when we engage them anywhere else. But we can spawn camp them basically. So, yeah, that may be the only tactic and that may be the only thing they're good at at the moment. And they may take it as a win over the overall course of the fight. Generally, when they meet us in any other sector, when they meet us in fair combat without a camp, they're losing. So, I take it as a win for the Trimark CNK Alliance. And I take it that their camping out on the station and using it as a defense point is one of their greatest tactics. Strong defense is what they're hoping is going to win the war for them in the end. However, um, Trimark and CNK aren't really running at an expense to keep this war going. They actually have become fully operational again, and they are running at almost 100% functionality. Within that same sectors where they used to um, really be a pain to affect uh, 6P, they're no longer such a nuisance. The members from CNK have been pushing them back every time they try anything. So, not really too bad for us at the moment. We're having a good time. And I hope to get a hold of the others in the wars. So, thank you all for watching. Have a good day.